guys, welcome to Entrepreneurcast. It's great to have you here with me today. It's an absolute pleasure to join you. Love what you're doing. It's it's amazing. Yeah, really pleased to be working you. with you. <laughs> <laughs> making me blush <laughs> so guys tell me more about yourselves outside of what you do who are you outside of your business in your <laughs> usual life and what do you enjoy doing in your spare time in our spare time we enjoy working on our business <laughs> amazing <laughs> that's more that's or less pretty, the way that's i that's am pretty much that is pretty much our lives right now. Like it's just constant. We're just really trying to get to a point where we can grow. But I enjoy socialising. I enjoy going out, meeting new people, connecting, finding more, finding out more about people than what you normally find out, and really kind of like, you know, build a relationship with people that you wouldn't necessarily meet on a day-to-day -day basis. So that's probably my main interest at the moment. My interests change pretty much all the time. <laughs> Yeah, I'd say pretty much kind of the same. I enjoy spending time with like family, girlfriend, obviously. And yeah, I don't, even if it's like speaking to new people online, like that we meet that's in a yeah. different country, you know, building relationships, speaking on camera like this is, is exactly the same as being mm. in person. So other than working, like Greg said, it's pretty much took over the hobbies. So t tell us more about your business and what actually inspired you to start it? Yeah. So go? Yeah, go on. Cool. Right. Okay. So obviously my name's Greg Nichols and Brad Morley. And it was around about 18 months ago that we kind of decided that we were going to take things kind of into our own hands. And we were both working corporate jobs and still do work corporate jobs. And we was like, there's got to be more than like more to life than this. We really have got to change something. So we kind of went down a few business paths. Some things didn't really work out. Some things are still on the horizon, which is cool. But we were kind of just stuck one day when we was like, look, there's just so much information out there on the Internet. It's like an information overload. And you really do have to filter through all of that stuff to be able to find the correct information. And we was like, how can we get the right information as quick as possible from people that actually know what they're talking about? You know, so we were around Brad's house one day and Brad was like, you know what we should do? We should just create a podcast where we pretty much just, you know, ask how these entrepreneurs are physically getting to where they are because there's so many podcasts out there at the minute where they kind of talk about the success and the success is brilliant like you can't you can't hide the success and we all love to talk about it once we're, once we're there but at the end of the day we're startups just like yourself where you know we want to be able to physically know how these people are doing it because there's so many people out there that are doing it we just want to know how they're physically getting from, and this is our slogan. We want to know how we can get, how we can get people from stage one to success, and that's where we kind of dedicate all of our time to, to really find out how these entrepreneurs are growing their business. And it's amazing. Like we've connected with so many cool people that have like pretty much come from nothing and really, you know, grown and changed their lives for the better. And that's our message, and that's what we want to get out to our audience and yours as well. So basically, you're like two junior Napoleon Hills. <laughs> yeah. Because <laughs> that's yeah. what he did, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's a compliment. Thank you. <laughs> and he... I'm busting now. <laughs> <laughs> what would you say was your greatest challenge and how did you manage to overcome it? One challenge I'd probably say was, well, there's two actually, but I'd say one is if you want to connect with like influencers on your show, that's uh, something that a lot of people want to do. They want to get these high profile people on their show. Mm. But in return, if you're going to get them on your show, then they need to see, you know, that they're going to get a return on their investment. So connecting with influencers is a, is a, is a great thing to do for any business where you're going to seek more opportunities, but you need to come up with something that is going to be able to give them what they want. And you need to know how to approach them well, because, if you're if you're going to go go into mailing like some of these big timers, then they're going to have a lot of emails. For example, mm. some some of them get like thousands of emails per day, to which you could take a fraction of those are all people that want to feature them. So it could be podcasters, it could be contributors for you know publications, all asking the same thing, and they got to pick what ones they're going to do and which ones stand out the most. So you need to know how to be the one that's going to attract how that how your opportunity is going to be more attractive than others so i'd say like that was a challenge that we've 
got down to a T pretty well. Yeah, we have. And it's proved it's been a proven record because the more influencers we're getting on the show, it's obviously working and it's attracting others. So um, mm. that's a big challenge, knowing how to approach influencers in the right way. So you're going to stand out from the crowd, I'd say, as one of them. Yeah, and I think for me, I think it was my my point of view was slightly different because you know at the, at, at the mo- at the moment we're both juggling full time jobs with our passion as such. So we're we're at the beginning stages. We was like you know dedicating you know ridiculous amounts of hours to just building and building and building and building, and we didn't really have much of a plan. It was just like let's just create as much as we possibly can, and we received quite. You know, really good advice from a guest on our show that basically said, like, you want to be able to schedule your time so that you're getting the most out of what you're trying to do, because it's all well and good. You can create all this amazing content, but you've got to focus on particular points that will grow your business quicker. And that's what we've really started to do. We've started to create kind of content calendars and, you know, task lists and things that are going to really kind of productivity hack our business as such. So, yeah, that was probably our biggest challenge was, or my biggest challenge, and I know it, it was a struggle for Brad as well, was kind of just juggling the, the, the corporate life, personal life, and passion life and business life, you know? Yeah, because like they say, you don't, don't, rush, don't rush it, but yeah. go as quickly as possible. So you need to, you might, you're going to have less time, especially when you're, you're doing a side hustle and you've got other jobs going, and you're going to have a lot of content to create within that short amount of time. So you need to know how to hustle effectively, basically. Yeah. So you would say you overcame that challenge with finding those little tools, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Just knowing what works for you, you know, um, like things like what Greg was saying, putting together a kind of content creation calendar. I've actually got one over yeah. there, to be fair, um, has certainly helped in, like this year, we kind of said, because we started towards the end of last year, 2016, it was like, you know, we was new to it. We just went all in and we tried to do everything at once. And I think you do need to, there's like an example. Oh, cool. So, so you've got like Monday to Friday. And what we've done is put in like different types of content throughout the week to, to create and to focus on on certain days. So this was actually something that helped through um, a guest we had on the show. Um, he said like dedicating one specific day to something. So, for instance, Thursdays I put on there if because we contribute to these two big publications specifically using a Thursday for writing copy only yeah. and not getting distracted and, and jumping over other things and leaving work half complete. And then like Greg might do uh, something else on that day. And then on a different day, he might have his writing day. So it's like we're using two people effectively. And instead of having five hours a night between us, we've got 10 hours. Yeah, exactly. And that's where I think a partnership really does kind of come into play really, really well because we both use our skills to produce as much as possible so you know brad's really high on creating images and graphics and really kind of get the getting the brand out there and my kind of my kind of uh, role to the thing is kind of the back end stuff like making sure that the technical specifications are right making sure that the uh, the content's perfect before we get it out there making sure that the podcasts are edited and really at a point where you know if you were to listen to it it would sound like a professional production that's how much we really kind of do dedicate our time to making sure that this this thing is really going to kind of set us out from everybody else and obviously you know exactly how that is are there any like specific resources that you could share with us that really helped you during that journey Mm -hmm. there's a few things Um, i i personally would cancel your netflix subscription (laughs) love it (laughs) (laughs) that was i think that was probably my biggest resource because like that was just a complete and utter it was so distracting because I know it was there and I'm a huge TV junkie as well. I love watching series of, of programs and that just turn it off, just turn it off, just cancel the subscription. Cause it's just, it's just a, you know, it's a distraction that you just can't afford to have it in the beginning stages. Definitely. Yeah. Um, I'd probably say like the, the, the old school things like reading books is super helpful because I think what you can get caught up in, and this is something that certainly, I can admit to is you because you want to create all the time you feel that taking time out to learn isn't a part of actually getting yeah. work done whereas in actual help that is going to help you you need to learn as much as you can so you can you know make expand your knowledge become like learn new things about what works you could be saving time you could be shaving time off because it's like if you was to pursue something I can't think of any example say say for instance you wanted to build your social media profile 
in a certain way um, and you wasn't quite hitting the reach that you could if you was to be learning on a podcast about social media marketing then and they focused on how to build your instagram profile yeah. for example you might learn things from that that would shave you time off of what you're actually doing mm. to make you get things done quicker so things like listening to podcasts is super helpful um, go listen to stage on startup obviously um, <laughs> and then like things like um reading books is especially is a big thing if they're around specific topics like there's there are loads over there that people you know you can you can jump into that's from personal development all the way through to actually learning about starting a business yeah. so so they're, they're two, two good resources um, that, that would super help, definitely help. Yeah. Would there be like any technology-based resources that you find? Yeah, more than uh, Yeah, so we, and you as well, man, like we, use yeah, the, we, use, we use this tool called Snapper, which is an online graphics creation oh, yeah. tool that we are completely religious to. Like before we were using Photoshop, and we still do use Photoshop to an extent, but we create all of our images that create loads of engagement because they're 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 produced and made in a specific way and snapper which is n uh, sorry s n a double p a dot io yeah. just this online graphics tool it's so easy to use there's no kind of layers or anything like that it's literally just simple to use 100 percent. i would definitely use that for kind of building graphics and creating engaging images images yeah. it's a bit like canva kind of thing yeah so you're creating content and it's it's a good way of putting it together instead of like approaching a, a graphic designer and paying them to create your content for you you can just do it yourself mm. and that's how you know we're distributing as much as possible out on the likes of instagram facebook every day yeah um another tool that i would i would 100 percent recommend is wordpress 100 percent use wordpress because there's so many people and so many businesses out there that go to a website designer and spend thousands on a website when you can physically just buy a domain for 10, 10 pounds, $10, and then buy a, a theme from Theme Forest for 50 to $60, a really good one as well, a well-designed one. And then you just customize it to the way you want it. It's super easy to use. You can't really go wrong with it. You just enter all of the stuff that you want for your business into that, and away you go. You put your logo on it, you put your stamp, and you've got a website. You can have a website done with WordPress in probably – Two hours, two, three hours. Yeah. And for things like productivity and like how we've got it all on paper, you don't have to do that. No. And that's just a way. Sometimes when you've got so many tabs up on your computer, it can be hard to, you know, stay like not distracted because um, you end up going on each tab and think, oh, yeah, I've got to finish that. I've got to finish that. So things like apps like Trello. Trello is a good app mm -hmm. to do this. It just helps you like keep notes, make cards, like put your work into some kind of schedule where you can actually stay organized and not lose time by every night thinking, what have I got to do tonight um, and trying to map it out yeah. and waste an hour already. If you've got it all mapped out, you can say, right, tonight is time to write or time to do this, create images. I'll spend the night on that. And it just yeah. helps you get th things done a lot quicker. Plan in advance. Yeah. 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 Yeah, yeah. yeah that's great. And and with WordPress, that's, that's a very good point because some of the biggest companies in the world, they use WordPress. They, they don't yeah. use yeah, exactly. the old-fashioned way. I believe Apple uses WordPress. Really? Really? Yeah, I, think, I, I believe so. I think my um, husband done research uh, yesterday, and he found that. And I was like, wow. I, I wasn't even su surprised much because I know like some huge companies, they all use mm. WordPress because it's simple, it's yeah. easy, and you don't need to waste so much time and money developing something in scratch which will take a lot of time and money to change if you need to change anything mm -hmm. yeah definitely. Um, so yeah wordpress is great but also you obviously you mentioned reading which i truly believe in but would you say you guys read some books that totally changed your life yeah jesus christ where do we begin i've gone through so many books in the past 18 months that i can't even think my i think one of the biggest ones that i've used yes those two books this book is Greg, that. Greg, we was doing a boot out once we uh, was trying to we was cash. trying to make some money and i was gonna sell that book and brad was like no you can't sell this book that was serious i mean like greg knew a lot about steve jobs um and he was like the one that because he's into that kind of thing he was telling me all about him really i just really knew like the, the average stuff that everyone knew then i read that and i was like wow this guy is like a serious visionary like that's that's impressive book so that's how to think like, steve, think jobs. like steve jobs that's, great. Um, that's a good book also that one for me has been pretty great it's been quite hard to get into because 
Peter Thiel, he's the co-founder of PayPal. It's a really interesting book, that, and a lot of people on our show have recommended it. But it's you, you have to really get your head into it. It's notes on how to build a future and startups, notes on startups. So that's super useful, but like really, you have to really put your mind to, to reading it and mm. get into it. So there's two for me. Um, I know Greg's got some. Yeah, mine would be, um, let me think, let me think, let me think. Mine would probably be, again, the Steve Jobs autobiography. I think that kind of feel like that that shaped me as a person. I read that when I was, I think I just turned 18, and I was like, this is for me. Like, this is where I need to go. Like, that guy has left a legacy that we're all using every single day, and he's, his name will be forever remembered. And I just, it just kind of really kind of touched me in a way that, you know, I didn't think would. So, yeah, that one this one as well i've been reading this i've not finished it yet um seven day startup by dan norris uh, if anyone's like connected with him mm. you see like you're following his journey but that that's super that's super um actionable there because it's all around how to actually start a business within seven days and launch it within seven days and it's pretty impressive everyone sort of looks at it and goes you can't physically do that in seven days but the stuff that he's sharing in there he actually gives you like a plan to how to actually get your business launched in seven days and uh because he, he's gonna he's but he's had like tons and tons of failures and years and years of failures mm. until one day he just hit it and it's all about like validation and, and things like that so that's a that's another book that i'd recommend mm. as well so yeah we're oh, we're I'm asking this is. <laughs> so we've got instagram live running as well so guys what would you say was your greatest success Christ so Christ. far i know you have a lot of successes to come yet to come yeah. Yeah. but so yeah. far what was the greatest success you actually um uh, i would say our greatest success, success was we kind of we we devoted quite a lot of time into instagram and we said we was going to reach um we was going to reach 15,000 followers by in in about two months and we invested ourselves into physically you know putting all the time putting all the effort figuring out how to use it and yeah we've done it we smashed it we're now on uh, 18.1 thousand followers on on instagram now which is great so Amazing. that would that would probably be our biggest success or my biggest success what about yours brad mine would be definitely like connecting with influencers mm. because we've managed to bag like some really interesting people yeah um for that for our show ones that we've already interviewed but ones that we've got coming up as well mm. and build like relationships not just like getting them on the show and never hear from them again but actually turning them into like sustainable growing relationships yeah and it's obviously just expanding our connections so that 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 would be probably mine especially this year we've got like people reaching out because of what we've done at the moment the founders month collaboration there's also been like two or three others that have reached out to us and said that they want to do collaborations as well. So um, things like that. And they're big brands. So that that's going to be good for us as well as good for them. So that would that would be another great success, I'd mm. say. Yeah, that's, that's a bit of a funny thing that I find because everybody comes up with like new ideas in their own way. Where do you guys come up with your ideas? Oh, good. Great question. I love that <laughs> one. That's a brilliant question. Um, no word of a lie. I mean, we... We, me and Brad, we both kind of live behind the philosophy of, you know, if you think it's a good idea, just do it. What have you got to lose? You know, if if we, we're we very kind of quick thinkers anyway. So if ever we kind of come up with an idea, we'll just say, what do you think about this? And if we both go, yeah, all right, okay. And then we just go ahead and do it. So we would probably brainstorm. We'd figure it out yeah. and then kind of work from there, I reckon. Yeah. Helps having two people put, put ideas Yeah, together. definitely. You can't physically do it on your own. So you're not the kind of people who come up with ideas like in the shower or. Oh know. yeah, oh yeah, <laughs> they happen everywhere. If yeah. you want to get technical, I mean, you know, the toilet, the <laughs> toilet room is a great place yeah. to think. Or, or whilst the kettle boils, that's always my thinking place. That's whilst it. the kettle is boiling. Yeah. I'm, oh I'm, wow, that's really cool. We, we're both night owls, but like sometimes it can get pretty extreme. You can oh, end up yeah. staying late, that's like you worst. can stay up late. And it seems like we always come up with like these great ideas right at the last minute, like the, the one o'clock in the morning when we need to get up at five o'clock. Yeah. And sometimes like I'll have these spurs where me and Greg speak a lot on like Google Hangouts throughout the day and WhatsApp and stuff like mm. that. And I might think of like five things at once and I'll like text Greg. Oh, my God. What about this? What about this? What about this? Long paragraphs. Like so, that. 
So when he like open when he wakes up in the morning or something, he probably looks at his phone and there's like all these things to answer and he's like, What the hell? So like <laughs> you do have these moments where everything comes at once yeah. and other days you might have times where you think, I can't think of anything. So Yeah. Yeah, I'd say ideas, they probably just come throughout the day. Mm. You, literally, literally like you could see something online and that could inspire you to come up with an idea and you think, Oh, I'm going to build on that yeah, right. and work from there, yeah. Exactly. So especially like if someone was to do like a Facebook post asking a question mm. and then a lot of people engage and there's like a long thread of people putting their answers and you could think, is that like a gap in the market? That could be something. Mm. So that's helped with ideas as well, I'd say. Would you say that like whenever you come up with all, with all those ideas, would you say you kind of action on them straight away or do you allow some time to kind of sit in, sit it in your head and like see oh yeah it is worthwhile idea oh maybe not shouldn't waste my time on it i mean it depends on how big the idea is if it's an idea that's going to kind of help us grow as a brand and as a business um then we kind of put it into action straight away see if it works and then kind of really and then kind of watch it grow and then kind of scale it from that way but over the past few weeks we've had loads of these big ideas where we're like, right, yeah, we can do that, we can do that. And we're like writing them down and writing them down. And we're thinking, we can't do this at this particular point. We physically cannot fit any more time into our day to try and make this idea work. Yeah. So when, when we've made it, we're, yeah. we're, we're just going to be constantly <laughs> creating new things 24-7. But I suppose that's just life as an entrepreneur, right? Yeah. yeah. I mean, like, you, you're going to have, like, ideas. Everyone's got ideas. It's like how you act on them. And I yeah. think there's, there's two takeaways which, which kind of differentiates the two options and can make it pretty difficult for someone and can actually stop them from pursuing an idea. And that is, one, if you think about it too long or do too much validation on it, then you can be wasting time. Yeah. Uh, you can be, you know, you could have launched already. And then in some cases, it's better just to launch it, like on a soft launch, not like go all out on a launch, but just do something and start growing it. And if it if it starts working, then that's when you can really focus on. Because what, what you don't want to do is spend like six months to a year planning something and then only to think I've wasted that time because no one needs this idea. So um, sometimes it's better to do a soft launch. You just got to kind of weigh up your options. Even if you think of an idea and it's not too technical, just try it and see what the kind of engagement is on the return. And then if it seems worth pursuing and people are engaging with it, then you can go all out on it. Mm. But I would also say do not leave the idea for too long. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That, that kind of leads to procrastination and instead yeah, exactly. of, you yeah. know, just going with it, people just Sometimes sit on just an idea it. and yeah. never do it. So, so do you guys have any, like, personal heroes, someone who inspires you? Yeah. Oh, yeah, where do we begin? Where do we begin? <laughs> Obviously, for me, my my idol that I'm kind of really following at the minute and taking a real interest in is Mark Zuckerberg. Mm. I think that the way his the way that he's built Facebook has just shaped the way the world has changed in the past uh, 10 years now. And when you think about it, this guy, he's not flash. He's not he doesn't boast. He's not money orientated. He just simply wants to try and make the world a better place by connecting people and working together to kind of produce a better world. And I think for me, Mark Zuckerberg at the minute is my idol but it kind of it kind of varies i'm really technical so i am i'm the geek really out of the two of us so i enjoy all of that type of stuff so yeah mark zuckerberg steve jobs uh bill gates yeah all of that all of those elon musk is huge like oh, yeah. i love what he's doing on like a, a whole new level but talking like smaller scale someone that i'm like following every single day there's probably like two people and that's one's gary v and another one's gerard, gerard adams because yeah. i think they're more for us, they're like more relatable at the moment. You know, what they're doing is something that, you know, the, the advice they're giving is stuff we can actually act on. It's not yeah. like if Elon Musk was to say, build the next SpaceX, for example, it's really technical science and you've got to be like super you know, intelligent and know what you're doing, have a skill set in that um, in most cases. Whereas like the stuff that Gerard and Harry V are doing is more like relatable and things that they're in our millennial kind of era. So yeah it's easier for us to adapt to it and actually put what they're doing into action. So I'd probably say those two. Obviously, there was a lot of stuff already said, but uh, what would be your generally top three tips and strategies for people who are listening today? Yeah, okay. So my, my first one would be focus on your circle of influence. So 
be around people that are physically going to make you grow as a person. Because at the end of the day, if you're physically around people that are, you know, bringing you down, a little bit negative all the time, constantly talking about bad things, that is going to have an impact on you. And it's not going to allow you to grow as a person because you're kind of thinking, well, you know, maybe he or she is right. Maybe, you know, maybe my dreams are too big. Maybe I'm not being realistic. Maybe I should just be normal, quote unquote. Yeah, you need to be around people that share your vision that will help you grow as a person and allow you to really achieve your dreams. And not, and not, I know that sounds really cliche and a little bit cringy, but it is so doable. And look at, I mean, us, for example, we've kind of shaved off quite a lot of our friendship circle simply because we want to be around. Like, we still love these people, we still, we're still friends with them. One of the quotes that I've figured out over the past few weeks through the Founders Month that we're currently doing is success breeds success. The more you're around successful people, the more that you will achieve success. That is my personal take. And I think it's partly because you also get really inspired. Yeah, yeah. You kind of, you hang out with like-minded people and you constantly have that positivity and the flow of ideas and, mm. and you see that person who already achieved something or, or you know, works on achieving something and you get so inspired when you have other people and they bring you down constantly and you don't want yeah. to do anything. Have you guys heard about Raymond Aron? Yeah. Yeah. So Raymond Aron, uh, I've attended one of his um, events here in London and one of the things, I, I won't quote it exactly, but it was roughly what he said was how many negative people do you have around? Like think about mm. all of them. Take your phone and delete all of them. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And how many it's people do? You gotta do it. Yeah. And and how many of those people you know you you're constantly in contact with, and how you know how many of you have that person who you're living with? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know. Yeah, that's tough. That's tough. That is really tough. Yeah. Yeah. So sort of walking downstairs and your sister or someone's like, "Did you delete me on Facebook?" <laughs> 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 exactly so yeah th that that's perfect uh, so yeah. that was the first one mm. i'd say yeah um be consistent because mm. that's something that a lot of people fail to do it is hard and i think people underestimate it because they see what these you know they, they start comparing themselves to what these influencers are doing and they'll 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 start thinking well they're there like they're doing it why can't i do it but they forget about the years and years of hard work behind getting them to that position um, and it can be tough. That's why, like, a lot of startups will fail because they'll start something and then six months down the line, they'll give up because they're not seeing results. Yeah. So being consistent um, is definitely going to get you places. You know, people need to see that you're serious. So put in the work and stay consistent. You know, be the one that people kind of come onto Facebook or Instagram or something and say, it's this guy again. Like, he's yeah. going at yeah. this. Like, every day he's bringing something. He's not like some days I don't hear from him. He's in my face constantly. Um, maybe I should start paying attention. So be consistent and um, don't spend too much time pondering over something or thinking about an idea because whilst you're thinking about some great idea, others out there are actually creating it. So actually just just do, just like start doing the work. Mm -hmm. And then I'd probably say that the last one would be build a team, like get people that all have different skill sets that will allow you and your business to grow quicker because the more people that you get involved the, more, the quicker that you'll see growth. One thing we've really started to realize is that you physically can't do it on your own. And that's with two of us. So the more people that you get that have that vision and have that, and it kind of relates back to the circle of influence thing that if you've all got a, if you've all got a set of skills that will allow you to grow, you're going to get there quicker at the end of the day. Yeah. yeah so those those three i could go we could go on for hours here <laughs> <laughs> we will be shortly kind of bring it to the end but before we do that what is the next step for you what are you looking to achieve next or what's the next project you're working on etc so i'd Sorry. probably say that we are going we are going to continue to grow stage one startup until we are influencers within the podcasting startup social media realm that's kind of growing at the minute. We want to be able to speak at conferences confidently that, uh, that we're sharing all of the knowledge that we've learned out to the people that physically need it. Because at the end of the day, it's not easy. And if you're getting that right information made, you got you are going to you know connect with so many people on a level that just takes you to the takes you to the top. And then realistically, in the next kind of year, we're probably going to continue to grow. We're also starting a um, we're starting another show which allows people 
to learn lessons from the entrepreneurs that we get on the show. So we're going to be talking about like how to write a business plan, how to create a website, how to build influencer relationships and things like that, really. Yeah, I think like this is like the, our year of growth. I feel like 2016, we started it late. Um, you know, we, we start we launched it at the in the last half of the year. So mm. it was kind of finding our feet, finding like where, what direction we want to head in. Yeah. Um, and just really learning as much as we can about this game. And this year is like growth time because we've kind of planned out, we started planning back end of last year, exactly like what we want for this year, what goals we want to hit. And most of it is all down to growth. So it's kind of like our years will kind of go 2016, learn, 2017, grow, and 2018, scale, really. Well, you never know who is listening. So if there is someone who could help you in any way, what sort of help can people currently like listening provide for you? Maybe what kind of people do you want to connect with? Mm -hmm. Or what else that you need to make things happen for yourselves? Yeah, so basically we're really trying to focus on getting our content out there to as many people as possible. So if any of you listeners are listening right now and they're interested in our story, come over to Stage 1 Startup and share. Just let people know about this journey because, you know, it needs to be documented and that's exactly what we're doing. Yeah. So there could be like someone listening that is, uh, you know, they're not, they don't necessarily need, they might already be business owners, um, but if they're like, if they know someone that's an early stage startup that could really use the help and resources from uh, people like us and our podcast, then uh, that would be great. And also, if there's any influencers that so happen to be listening to your show that's that's willing to uh, you know expand our network and reach, then that's also a great great kind of people that we're looking for. Mm -hmm. Awesome! It's all about collaboration and helping. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Great stuff. Um, so, is there anything else you would like to add or advise on to the listener today? I think if anybody's listening now and you're kind of procrastinating on an idea, just do it. You've yeah. got nothing to lose at the end of the day. You've got to start somewhere. You know, even if it doesn't work in the in the first year, two years, three years, just work at it consistently and just start right now. Yeah. And obviously listen to Stage One Startup. <laughs> <laughs> um, how can people find you? If they head over to our website, which is stage1startup.com, um, one is the O-N-E, by the way. Yeah, everything's on there. They can they can find all our best resources and our, our podcast. Each episode is on there. Um, also, we're mainly on so we're on social media a lot. So if anyone wants to get in touch, uh, they can find us on Instagram. We've got personal brand Nichols and Morley, um, and we've also got our Stage One Startup account, Twitter, Facebook. Anywhere like that, we're, yep. we're always there. Just drop us a DM. Thanks very much for coming on the show, guys. Thanks I really that. look forward to following your success story, and I'm sure we'll uh, touch base again in a year or two when, you know, you're much further down that road. Yeah. Hell yeah, <laughs> let's do it. Let's do it. Love what you're doing. Thank you for having us on the show. We yeah, appreciate, really appreciate it. it.